Hello everybody, um, this is a follow-up video on the uh, issues I was having with my Hover One Alpha electric kick scooter. Um, for anybody that hasn't seen the first video I did about it, uh, please watch that just so you have some context of what I'm talking about in this one. So, when you watch the first video, the one thing I said was that I didn't even contact customer service to let them know about the problems because, you know, it... I figured that it was going to be a waste of time. I've worked for companies that were kind of fly by night before, and a lot of times their philosophy is not on quality and repeat business. It's on, you know, make the product as cheap as you can and then rip off as many first timers as you can. Now, I'm not saying that that's how they are, but that's what I assumed that that's what they were going to be like. But the day after I made that video, I started to feel a little bad that, you know, even if I don't want to deal with them for any kind of replacements or I'm not expecting anything, I should let them know that there was a problem there, at least to get it off my conscience. So I did tell somebody about it. So I went to Hover One's website and I opened up a ticket. Um, it seems like that's the only way you can get to anything where there's parts and stuff like that. You actually have to open up a ticket. But anyway, so I opened up a ticket and I told them in the ticket, I don't want anything. But I think you guys need to see this, and I put a link to the video. Um, so I said there were safety concerns. And I figured, okay, so that's the end of it. And I figured I'd just drive around as it was. I mean, it's a little messed up. The uh, you know whole front neck there is loose and everything. But I didn't think it's going to come off at this point now, so it would be okay. So I go out for a ride the next morning, and I come back in. Just some coming into the garage, the, my phone rings, and... Wow, it's this woman from Hover One. Interesting. I really wasn't expecting a phone call from them. And to my surprise, she doesn't even mention the video. She just immediately starts going off about how concerned she is about the safety factor about what I showed her. And she actually thanked me for pointing it out, making the video, and started talking about what they were going to do to improve that. And they were going to pull some off the line there in China. They were going to talk to the factory manager. It sounded like she was going to do some out-of-box audit stuff for things that were about to ship and make sure they had a handle on this because she was very concerned about it. And I thought that was great um, because that's really what I was worried about at that point. Because, I, I, you know, I didn't even mention, I don't think, in the other video about the money I spent in getting ripped off. It was about the safety concern of it, right? So I was really happy to hear her say that. And before we got off the phone, she says, and we're sending you a replacement, brand new Hover One Alpha scooter. I was like, whoa, nice. That, you know, cool. I, maybe I'm wrong about Hover One. You know, I didn't expect some good reaction out of their customer service like that. But she says, you know, with the coronavirus and everything on hold, it's going to take a couple of weeks. But I was like, hey, you know, it's okay. It works. I'm driving around. Um, not a big deal. Now, when I filled out the ticket, I gave her the serial number that's on the bottom of this thing. And I worked for companies before. When you put the serial number in, they can trace it. They know where it came from and everything. That's not, uh, you know, you don't have to be a technology giant to have that work. But so I've been riding this around and it's been six weeks. OK, I've not received any more phone calls from Hover One. I haven't received any additional emails other than the confirmation that they got my first ticket. And I certainly haven't received a new scooter. And in the meantime, I've had several other failures on this. Now, the original failures were dangerous enough, if you've watched the first video. But let me tell you what happened in addition, okay? So the other night, um, a couple of streets over, my buddy's got an RC car track, and we race at night there. So on a Saturday night, I was driving this thing home, you know, close to midnight and it was pretty dark and I had four bars on it I'm about halfway home and I've got all the lights on and everything because they're pretty cool and all of a sudden beep 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 it starts beeping and there's a code lighting up on the uh, sensor up here right or on the display and it says E7 right and it starts flashing next thing you know boom it powers off right lights go off it's dead everything right and it just so happens that I was on a street that had no street lights, and I was doing like 15 miles an hour, right? So, holy crow, 
<laughs> there's deer everywhere. There's trucks parked out in the street. I can't see because I was looking at the LED light right before it happened. So I'm like totally blind, you know, for about 15 seconds. So I'm screeching to a stop, hoping that, oh my goodness, I don't hit a curve and die, right? But I didn't. And I got stopped, right? And about 30 seconds later, I figured I was going to have to walk at home. So thank God it was dark. The kids, you know, in the neighborhood weren't going to see me walking my new scooter home because it failed. But I pressed the button to restart it and it came back up and it said I had four bars and the lights all came on and I drove it home and I didn't have a further issue with it. I took it out the next day and I haven't seen that issue since. But according to the book, E7 is a battery failure. It says it needs to be replaced, right? So that was a little alarming. I don't know why that happened. I, I haven't gotten it wet or anything like that. So... And I don't roughhouse with it. I only take it on paved roads and things. So that seemed a little odd. So that was the first weird intermittent failure that I had. And that could have been potentially dangerous as well. Suddenly shutting off like that, especially at night. Wow. But yesterday, okay, I'm coming home from the park. And I'm coming up via the main drag over here, the busiest street that all the substreets come off. It's a very, very busy road there. Now, this is supposed to be a commuter scooter, so that's more likely what you would be on if you were using it for it's supposed to be. And I was doing like 18 miles an hour on the shoulder, and I, I almost got home just as I was passing like the other park entrance. All of a sudden, beep, 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 beep. It starts beeping at me. This time it's an E1 error, and whang, it shuts down on me, right? As I'm going down this road. Now, of course, this is during the day and it just has to do it, right? Just as I'm passing the entrance to the park where there happens to be this big guy on a Harley pulling out, right? And he sees me struggling with this thing and he chuckles to himself. And as he's pulling by me, he says something. Now, I didn't hear what he said. Probably something like, hey, try a Harley instead of a hover one next time. But I don't know exactly what he said. But same thing happened, though. I... Waited about 30 seconds, and I hit the button, and it came back up, and didn't have any failures, and I took off, and it was quick, and it didn't make any funny noises, it didn't fail, and I drove home. I even took it out for a drive later, just to make sure it was still okay, and it was. But now an E1 failure, according to the book, is the motor in the back was failing. And it shouldn't have been overheating because it had been sitting for a while before I took off. So it had actually been running, even though it was at high speed, a very short time. So uh, there's no reason for it to have overheated. Okay, so just for a recap, we had a clamp with bolts that were stripped out at the factory. Well, I assume at the factory. Um, only had one Titan, which uh, left this whole piece loose and felt like it was about ready to come out when I first got it. And the reason I found that out is because the front headset here started to come loose after I had been riding it for a day. And it turns out that when you take this off and look, the lock nuts had not been tightened correctly. They were coming loose. We had it shut down while I'm riding home in the middle of the night. Um, and it gave me an error message of a battery failure. And I had it shut down while I was on a busy street with an E1 message that the motor had failed. Now, that's a pretty bad track record in my opinion, okay? Um, I don't know, maybe uh, errors like this on these scooters are very common, and that's kind of alarming if that's a common thing on scooters, but um, it would seem like that's a pretty high failure rate to me. Um, and it would seem like any one of those things, if it had failed at the wrong time, could be potentially very dangerous. I mean, again, it's my opinion, but um, I think a lot of people would agree with it. So, I, you know, Hover One did say they were planning on sending me a new one. So, and I had been patient because I figured, you know, it was just on back order because they, they said they were. So, I went to go on to Hover One's website to look up the status of my ticket, right, my original ticket. And for whatever reason, when I tried to go in with my email that I had opened up, they kept telling me that that email was taken and that the password was incorrect. So they have a little thing there that you can hit to reset your password. You know, it sends instructions to the email. And when I did that, it told me I wasn't authorized. It was a weird message. I don't understand that. Um, I've never seen that before. So what I did is I opened up a second ticket on a different email address and 
told them about the first ticket and the first reported problems. I even gave them a link to the original video to because I you know they want pictures and stuff of the problem. I was like, just watch the video. And I told them I was I was angry, you know, a little bit aggravated at the time. And I told them I wanted to hear from somebody within 24 hours. And the bottom line is I have not. Okay, now, you know, maybe it's just a, I don't know. Maybe with all that's been going on, everything back order, they got a lot of stuff they're dealing with. I don't know. And like I said, we can only judge by our own opinions. You know, I'm sure other people have had Hover One and they've been good or maybe they like them but personally this is my first one and this seems like it's a lemon to say the least and the thing that alarms me is is that when I drive through the neighborhood it's like all the kids flip out over this thing because it looks really cool you know it, it's pretty badass but um, I get nervous you know because of my safety concerns that the kids may want this exact one. When I went for a ride the other day, uh, my neighbor's kid was going for a ride with his mother and his sister. And as I went by them, I heard him say to his mother, Mom, I want that model for my birthday. And, you know, that, that scares me a little bit. Because if that kid, you know, something falls apart in this thing while he's riding it and he cracks his head open, I'm going to feel like I'm responsible for it. Because I was the reason he got it, you know. And I don't want that to happen. So, I don't know. I I would like to think that, uh, you know, Hover One was going to stand by their product here and they were still going to take care of me, but uh, I'm, I'm not really counting on it at this point. I think maybe I'm just going to have to cut my losses here and uh, start looking at maybe another brand. Uh, my friends that I ride with on the weekend down at the park, they all have Segways. My other friends, uh, the one that's got a racetrack, um, a couple streets over, him and his daughter had the Izumi M365, and those are pretty nice. They're a little smaller, front-wheel drive, but uh, they're um, pretty good quality, it seems like, and they have a, a pretty good reputation. The uh, seems like uh, it's a fairly good quality scooter for the money you pay for it, so I'll, I, I might just get one of those just to check it out. Because I, I'm not sure that I, I want to be relying on this if the motor's going to die on me, you know, or, or it's going to keep cutting out. Um, I did go for a ride today, and it didn't have any problems. Um, and I do try and go for a ride just about every day on it. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know what my other options are. Um, I guess, I mean, if I really wanted to, I guess I could report the um, defective parts and stuff, you know, or the defective, fact that it was defective, to there, there's an outfit called the Consumer Products Safety Commission, I think is what the, uh, the outfit is. It's like a federal outfit that you can report defective products that may be dangerous. Um, I suppose I could file a report with them, um, but I guess I'm just going to have to eat the $400. It seems like I got roasted on that, but, you know, sometimes that happens, you know, you live and you learn. Um, you know, I, like I said, it's my opinion. I, I'm not saying that every product that they've ever, that Hover One has ever put out has been bad, but this particular one sure doesn't seem to be too hot. Um, and at this point, I still can't, I still won't recommend to anybody that they get it. Um, it's just strictly for the safety issues. And that's a shame because I, I do like riding it when it works. Um, but, you know, what else can you do, you know? And I, I'm a little surprised at Best Buy, because um, I buy a lot of stuff from Best Buy, and in general, like, most things I get from them have been pretty good. Uh, this is the first thing that I got from them that was, uh, um, seems to be uh, in bad shape. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I still have hopes that one will come through for me, but we'll see. Bye.